think uh, DeMont got her, should thank her lucky stars that Holly Holm backed out of this one because she gets an Aspen Land who just had missed weight. Um, I know this might not be breaking news, but if you haven't been paying attention, Aspen Lad was set to fight, and she had missed weight. Um, we were betting against her when she was set to fight. Now she's going to be moving up a weight class, still in Vegas, fighting a girl who was training to fight the Holly Holm. Now, if you're going to you tell me that you get a Brazilian woman training to fight Holly Holm, getting underdog money on an Aspen lad who just missed weight and moving up a weight class, that's going to be a huge bet on my end. I am taking DeMont, and I'm taking that plus money all the way to the bank. I'm going to be putting everything I want on this card on this girl. Um, Aspen lad, something's not right with her camp. Something's not right with her weight cut. Uh, she wanted a payday still, and she's going to get it right here, but the – Odds makers are out of their mind. We have been beating Vegas, and nothing is going to be a better beat on Vegas than this fight right here. I got Dumont all the way. Um, I think we might be on the same side on this one. Cheers, buddy. You said it just as good as I could have. Uh, the one thing – oh, I almost didn't drink. <laughs> one thing that uh, you didn't mention mm -hmm. that I think plays into her favor, what is Aspen Lad good at? Takedowns. Takes you down. Grappling. She's good at that kind of shit. Have you seen the legs – on Dumont, who these are two fucking tree trunks. Now, for those of you who aren't familiar with grappling, that's tough to do. You ever see someone kind of spread their legs out, put their back on the cage or a sprawl, and you're having to grab that leg and bring it in, kind of lift it up? You, the goal is you want to kind of get it up, get their body kind of going in a backwards motion. You know how difficult that is to do with the amount of leg muscles on the person that she's fighting? If she can't, Take her down, which I am banking heavily that she can't. Take everything he just said. Oh, that is incredible. I'm giving you the all I can offer you after that. I love that. I'm going to give you the fight optics here. All of that considering, the striking is Dumont all day. All day. So if Aspen Ladd, on a bad weight cut probably, having trouble with the camp, all those things that you just heard, can't get the takedown, it's going to be a tough night in the office. And... <laughs> We're back to back underdogs. I just realized this on women's fights for a finale. Yeah. Um, so we she can't get the week. takedown. She's going to have to strike. And quite frankly, I would imagine if I was enormous, if and if I can do it, a dumbass like me over here wearing a gorilla shirt, if you haven't seen it, um, and he's wearing a banana shirt, can identify the path to victory. You know what I think can identify the path to victory? Her coaches, her camp, probably training for it. We got to keep this on the feet. We got two tree trunks there. We're going to keep those lumbered in with the roots, keep them right into the ground. I think this is a great, great underdog card. Welcome back to the Aqua Gun. Yet again, another tequila bet one by yours truly. I am a sport about it, though. <laughs> We're not doing tequila. We are actually doing rum whiskey. Yeah. So, or uh, rum S scotch? What Caribbean scotch. Is this? Caribbean scotch. Yeah, it's okay, that's trickster. interesting. I don't know what that is. Hi, So we're going to go ahead and get this out of the way first. Cheers. To rattlesnakes and condoms, two things I don't fuck with. <laughs> you know what? I thought I was out of the woods with you on these tequila bets for a minute there. Then my man missed weight. And lately, these guys missing weight have been nothing but trouble. I'm not going to lie, though. At watching that fight, um, my my butt was puckered up stiff enough where you couldn't have pound a butter-oiled <laughs> knife or a butter-oiled nail with a, with a sledgehammer in it. There was a couple times I was worried, but we didn't uh, we didn't prevail, and uh, we, we won yet another bet that he proposed to me, so we're good on that. And I'll tell you, I missed all these things that are happening in the world. You know, you, you got great things going on in football. Lions still losing in, in very valuable fashion as we do come to you from Michigan. So those are our, that's the hometown team that we get to watch every single week. College football, great things happening. Uh, John Gruden, uh, big news out of that too. Uh, playing, uh, you know what I was telling you earlier, he was playing homophobic, racist, hate your boss, bingo. Put all his chips in on that. <laughs> Um, That's a good sign you get this in. card, you know, you get this wonderful card that we have here. You can see the facetiousness in my voice and my tone, but I think that there is some good things to discuss there and unpack. But before we do that, it is important to know if you bet with us last week, 
You did damn well. In fact, I'm going to be, I'm going to gloat here for a second about myself. And then I think, you know, overall, there was only one loss picked and you just saw the bet, but, or the tequila bet. However, I had all five. And I tell you right now, not necessarily the hottest take. You could say favorite, favorite, favorite. Well, I got news for you. Not every fucking favorite wins. No. As always, we only give you the bets that we feel strongly about. If I feel strong about the favorites, I'm going to bet the favorites. I said that up front. It was a parlay piece. We we struck gold. My man struck gold. He uh, took first. First place in the DraftKings lineup. Um, I think I do the uppercut. That's the eight dollar one. Uh, hit for eight sixty five on that one. Um, had the four person parlay that I did put out on Bad Bitch Bets Friday night. That one hit. Um, tons of information on that one. You know, we lost the video of your uh, four man bet, but you hit a four man parlay with different men than me. Exactly. Well, actually, I think I have it. We can place that up here. Yeah, we'll put it up on the to show. But I'll tell you, when you watch the show, I don't know what you're looking for. We, I can't promise you we're going to hit every single fucking bet, but my God, it's insane. I it's mean, all, it's almost shocking five. me at this point. Five for five, it doesn't happen. I mean, it really doesn't. I, look at the look at the hotels in Vegas and tell me if that happens. It doesn't. Okay? <laughs> Let's just be real. Are uh, you hedged to say where you are beating Vegas at this point on the Aquagon? Oh. We are 100% beating Vegas. If you're a stat digger, feel free to look back at previous shows. Um, with all these winnings, I have one ask. One ask. It costs nothing. I know YouTube doesn't charge you to, to like and subscribe, right? You Is don't that get when you click in the, the mail. button? You click the, the sub button. Ooh. You, I promise you, if you do it right now, it'll take you two seconds, and it will cost you nothing to do. But it actually might make you money because we can keep giving you these great bets. Uh, I think uh, I'm going to pass the baton over to you here because I think you want to discuss a women's fight to start oh, this Oh, yeah. Off. We got a power card coming in on October 16th, Saturday. Um, the ladies are opening this fight card off. We got Estella Nunes versus Adriana Carasola. Woo. See, <laughs> you know, Encyclopedia Britannica for these names. Oh, yeah. We got a couple Brazilians going at it. Um all right, man, this is an interesting fight. Now, I got to get back on with my women picks because uh, last week we hit that underdog for the main event, so we got to get back on it this week. Uh, a lot of stuff going on here. Uh, Rane, we'll call her, starts out a little bit uh, slow, but she does look durable. Um, big favorite on this one, which I think we got her at one six, minus Neg 160 Minus right 160 now. versus plus 134 Nunez, Estela Nunez, Estella that is. Estela Nunez. Right. Okay, so be confused with Amanda Nunez. Oh, no, no, you don't want to do that. So we got the favorite here. Like I said, she starts a little slow. she got that power. I mean, she looks jacked. You can tell just by looking at her. Mm -hmm. um, now, being a Brazilian, I thought she's a little bit sloppy on the ground that compared to what a Brazilian should look like at, at this level of the game. And now we got the underdog, Estela Nunes. She has the name of Amanda. Uh, she trains with Tisha Torres. So she's, she has good looks with people that are jacked and built like that. Um, you know, a lot of weird things coming out with Nunes. I mean, she hasn't fought since 2018. She got hit for doping. Um, it's really a lot of things going on with why she's getting a UFC shot here. You won a couple of matches in one. You miss um, going through the contender series. You're going right to the UFC. Is it because her name's Nunes? Is it because she's with these big camps? But you know when she's doing these rounds with Tisha Torres, she has all the people in her corner. That's the reason why she's getting this UFC shot to open up the card. This girl is poised to hit the fucking stratosphere when she hits that mat on Saturday. This is the underdog pick of the week in my eyes. Nunez, all day, bet two, three units on her because you're getting plus, oh, what was it, plus 130? I think plus the, 130. the line's moving the opposite way already since I made my notes on this fight. Uh, so make sure you get this one in. You're going to have some money to bet the rest of the night. What do you think on this one? It moved quite a bit, which is interesting to me. Um, not enough for me to, not enough intel for me to know on this one, um, being it is her first UFC fight, UFC debut here. Um, Colonel uh, you know, she did, she won her last fight by knockout, um, has, does have the loss. Um, she lost to, let's see real quick. Amanda Hill or Angela Hill, Angela Hill. I mean, mm -hmm. Amanda Hill, Angela Hill. Anyhow, she, Angela Hill, you know, no, no shame in that loss. Uh, that scares me a bit, but listen, the camps, you bring up a good point. The camp, when we discuss like the camps and who they're, they're training with, if you don't think that matters, you're just kidding yourself. You know what I mean? Like you're—that's who you go to work and see every single day. 
I want you to think about that for a second. You don't think that makes you better? Why do you think in wrestling or in most sports, the younger brother is always the better one or younger sister? Because they've been getting beat up on by their bigger, older sibling, whatever that may be. I think that's that's applicable here as well. Uh, again, it's a no bet for me, but I don't hate the bet. And if you're, if you're going to have a deciding factor, let the line be that. Um, cause uh, Carnalosi hasn't done anything in the U in her UFC. That's really, she lost to someone that she should have lost to and beat someone that she should have beat. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that justifies a negative 162 line against the unknown. So yeah, I'm with it. I'm with it a lot. Okay. We can go ahead and move on up the card here. Now this one, I do believe we are on the opposite ends. I, uh, I am going to, I gave you a lot of favorites last week, except for the main event, which is when, uh, but, uh, we have Brandon Davis. Um, versus Batagarel. Again, we need that Encyclopedia Britannica for some of these, so <laughs> I apologize. Dana. Nice. Dana. -na. Either way, who gives a shit what the name is? It's not yeah. about the name. <laughs> I'm going to be going with Brandon Davis on this one, and I'm going to tell you why. He hasn't had the best run when you look at it. I think he's won two out of his last five fights, which puts him at three losses, two wins, right? Um, you know, he's had some good competition, good strength of competition. You date back to even the contender series and something that, you know, stays true in every one of his fights. There's things that I like about him. Guy fights for the ticket, good gas tank, mixes the kicks and the striking up well. When he gets taken down, he's moving, always moving, popping back up. Now, there is some holes in his game. There's a reason that he is an underdog, but he's one of those guys that I just think he stays in there. I love the movement from him. I think, you know, whether he gets taken down or on the feet, he's always live. And it's just one of those people where it's like, if you give me some dog money on there, again, the line's the deciding factor. If they fought 10 times, he might lose six of them. But I'm going to take the chance that I get one of the four and roll the dice here on this one. Okay, you know me, man. I love betting dogs. But when I'm breaking down this fight, I have a real hard time taking Brandon Davis on this one. Listen what happened with my man. He had two losses that got him cut from the UFC. He goes to Gulf Coast MMA win some fights i mean i guess the loss in the ufc was to giga to casey which is a tough fight to win but and it was a split decision but then you go to golf coast after getting cut from the ufc you win four in a row at the golf coast that's not blowing my hair back uh there's a reason why this guy's an underdog he's getting another shot at the ufc's crown but listen my man Danana is an absolute beast when it comes to this left hook this guy hits you with the left hook you are not coming back from it and that's the one thing that this guy does brandon davis he gets hit and he has not felt power like my man uh Diaga is gonna hit him with and i got him all day i know it's minus 200 is it live out you gotta update it out on that one Minus 200, I'm showing, seeing on Tapology. It's not, uh, it, it has moved from there. It's now um, minus 190 and plus 150. Okay, so it is moving in my way. direction. Your direction. But I cannot take Brandon Davis on this one. Uh, this might have to be the tequila, but you going to give me a favorite on the tequila better. We're going to keep moving down the card. No, I, I think really we're, I, I we're going to give him a favorite here. Oh, and, and oh I'm, man. I'm, I'm telling you right now, and you, you did take some of the win, like my, my counter argument away. The fight that sent him packing from the USC was Gigi Jakatsi. So let's, let, let's not kid ourselves. That doesn't really look that bad at this point my man gd <laughs> cannot wrestle though i mean the reason why i got that split decision is my brandon davis took him down a couple times but on the feet he just could not do shit uh, diego can fight on the ground as well that's why i just think he's a little bit more well-rounded i am excited for this fight though i think overall i think it is going to be an exciting one um one say what you will about brandon davis i think that you know he is very active in there and he's very durable and he's got a good gas tank so regardless of this one this is one you know if anything this might be a good one to sprinkle the, the over or go in the distance on if you want to do a little prop bet action um but i think we're uh, we, we're live i'll cheers you on that on a, yeah. on a tequila That's better a or you know i actually did not mind whatever this what, what the uh, I, caribbean, caribbean scotch, scotch. I like it. Whatever that is, you know what I mean? Caribbean scotch. So uh, we'll probably take that one next time, too. So I appreciate that. Um, let's go ahead and move on up the card here. We are also on opposite ends. Now, let me just be real, people. I'm putting my I'm putting my sweatshirt on, my hood up, and I'm going into the storm. And I am riding right into it here. And there probably could be some people that hate this pick in buyer beware. <laughs> I am not saying this is the lock of the night, but I am going to offer some logic and why I feel somewhat strong and why I'm going to put some money on this one. Um, so we have Ludovic Klein versus Nate Landwehr. Now, Nate, if you watch his fights, my man is an 
absolute kamikaze. And I don't mean that like the, the guys that, that, you know, fly in the, uh, in the, what are the, the jet fighters? Oh yeah. You know, I'm not talking like that, but that style where this guy is, will hunt, walk you down the entire fight. And I know he's been a little bit chinny as of recently, but if you look over the, the course of, you know, his last fights before the UFC and everything like that, he was a very durable guy. Sometimes you just catch one and I'm going to be banking on that one. Now, why is Klein sitting at negative 305 versus plus 230 right now, time of taping? Well, Klein has a very, very good upkick. And he's landed on people and he's put them out. But here's the thing. When you're getting walked down, you're going to be on that back foot quite often, which makes it very difficult to land said upkick to a point where you're going to put someone down. Landweer actually is one. In fact, uh, the damage. Um, Elkins. Elkins yeah. he, he won, I mean, he's actually won fights in the UFC, which I believe that was his UFC debut, if I'm not mistaken, by just walking a guy down and having lots of volume. So if you're hoping for him to land an upkick when he's going to be on his back foot the whole night, first off, if there's anything that's the easiest thing to kind of plan for and or defend, it is that upkick because it's got to come from down up top. So if he's doing the right camp, and he's got the right people around him saying, listen, this is what you got to do. You're going to walk him down, keep those hands up there, wait for that up kick. We keep him on his back foot, keep the volume up. You're going to get the decision here. Now, the key thing is, though, for Nate, he's going to have to get a decision. I don't see him knocking this guy out. So that's a big thing, too, to kind of put into your focus. But I just see at plus 230 an opportunity for a guy that I know is going to fight for the ticket. He's going to walk the guy down. I think he's going to be able to dodge that kick. And it's been a few years since Klein's laced one of those kicks in for a knockout. So that's where I'm at. I'll let you offer your two cents, though. All right, man. You know what? I like the way you're picking today. You're picking a lot. I mean, even value on this guy. I think Nate's got some value on him, even though I don't think he has a shot to win this one. He His last fight, he lost to our boy Juicy J, Juliana Rosa. And I just, man, I, I, if this guy can get you the knockout on you, my boy, clean, clean, we'll call him on my end, the head kick guy. He, I think he can get it done. I mean, Juliana Rosa's stand up's nowhere near as good as Juliana this Rosa's guy. not our boy. Not we, our boy. He's actually being facetious. We actually like to fade Juliana Yeah, we, Rosa we're fade, that. auto fade almost sometimes. I think he screwed us last time, but mostly f yeah, fade Juliana Rosa. Went with Lam I, I would have to check, but I'm pretty sure yeah. we did go with Lamb. <laughs> so uh, I think he had a fight since then. But um, our boy. Clean is my boy on this one. I I like the I like your angle on it. I really do. I just don't think even the, with the value of getting that plus money, he can beat this guy. Um, he's real sloppy. He does like to get hit. I mean, you know how fucking Darren Elkins is. He is just a wild man out there. He'll take a. It was too wild. I mean, beating. it was a great fight. Yeah, and the thing is, the night competition for sure. Part of that makes me a fan. Uh, maybe I'm being a bit of a fanboy here too. I just want to preface this because I'm a, I'm a, listen. I'm a man of intention. Okay. I want, I like Nate, fighters like Nate Landwehr are good for the UFC, especially considering the amount of cards that they're, the volume of cards that they're pumping out. I mean, this is a guy that he's in, and even if he loses this fight, I still think that he's going to get, stay in there just because he's the entertainment factor. The guy is, just, I mean, he takes damage, he invites it, he loves it. Uh, he's in there, he talks shit with people, like... And it's like that that nice banter, like not like the over the top stuff. It's just like I love to get in here and brawl with people, kind of thing. I think he's good for the sport, and uh, I think the way that he fights is good in a judge's eye. Real talk. Um, so, you know, again, give me the plus two thirty. Uh, definitely not going to go tequila bet on this one. Yeah, but, I can't hate uh, you on this one. I, I, but, I, I like uh, your I'm pick, Nate. but I got to be on the other side, so I'll take clean. All right. Ryan. Now I want to give you my lock of the night. Um, it's not a hot take, but, um, it is, it's a, it's a favorite. So I have Imov Ramazan, Ramazan versus Danny Roberts. Now I want to give you guys a couple of stats that I wrote down about Danny Roberts when doing the backlog on this fight. Danny Roberts has 6% takedowns and 53% takedown defense. Now, why is this important? The grappling is not there. Period. The man can't take you down if if you if you were if you tripped over your own foot when the ring when the when the fucking <laughs> fight starts. And half the time you go in for a takedown. And by the way, this doesn't when you see that that's everybody that he's ever fought. Okay, so it's it's not like he's only fighting like you know wrestlers. Like he could be just fighting a boxer that just took his ass down. Half the time you go in, you get it. Now you are fighting a wrestling a chain wrestling machine. 
This is going to be one of the, and, and this chain wrestling machine is a very good ground and pounder. I can tell you exactly what's going to happen in this fight. He's going to get taken down at will. Now, I know Danny Roberts, he's a slick striker. He's got good offense. I'll tell you that right now. But his opponent knows that. And it ain't going to be on the feet. And it won't be on the feet very long. I see a takedown right away. The ground and pound will come. He'll control the fight. You know, I don't know how to make a call whether or not he gets him on the ground and pound. But if it goes the distance, it's just going to be a straight, you know, own it, ownership, owning them all around the ring. Or, or the octagon. Or, you know, maybe he gets him out there. He just absolutely mauls him. And this guy just reaches for the cage door and you get him a submission. This is one where I actually like the submission prop because wrestlers aren't, like, known as submission people, right? Mm -hmm. But when you hit someone enough, they just want out. And this is one of those opportunities that I can see if you're going to play a prop, go for the submission prop. Because I think that uh, I think Danny Roberts is good enough to, like, he's not going to tap via, via someone punching him in the face. He'll move around enough to kind of stay in there, but eventually he's just going to give his neck up. So that's where I'm at. I don't know if you have something different to offer on this one. Man, this one, um, you know, you kind of sold me on this one. I was just going to take Danny Roberts because I like the dog, but, I mean, I look at my notes here. I, I, he should be on a three-fight losing streak. His last fight, the guy kind of got cocky with him, kind of put his hands down, and he just punched him, knocked him, KO'd him. I, I didn't really like that much. Um, I, I don't have anything really good to say about the guy. I was going to take him because he was an underdog. I think Ramazan. Hopefully, hopefully I sold some of you because this one's going to hit. This is my lock of the night. Uh, I haven't mentioned it yet, and I do want to add, and, and if you could research this. Mm -hmm. I don't think it costs money to, to like and subscribe or, or any – it doesn't affect anybody Ooh. anyway but besides the two seconds it takes to do it. I think, yeah, if you're hitting that like button, you're going to get more winner picks. Okay. So if you like and subscribe, you don't get charged money. There's not a maximum. Like if, I, if I'm if i subscribed to like 15 different people, I don't start getting – Oh, no, it's for free. Okay. Just want to make sure. That's my way of saying it. Like and subscribe. Just hit it. Go ahead. It's fine. You're going to make some money anyway. All right, cool. So we're going to move on up the card here. We're just flowing like an ocean or like a river, I should say. Oceans maybe flow as well. <laughs> All right. So I actually really like this one, too. Uh, we have Julian Marquez versus Jordan Wright. Now, I want to talk about Julian Marquez here for a second. I just want you to just Google this guy real quick. Tell me that this guy doesn't look like the guy that's going to, like, literally, like, I'll take you back to high school. You're there with your lunch, or elementary school, maybe. You're there. He's like the guy that'll take, like, two things. You're worried that he's going to take, like, two things out of your lunch pail. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, he just looks like like just this intimidating figure. Like, hopefully he doesn't take my sandwich. I'll be hungry in math class. Like, geez. Yeah, you ain't doing nothing about it. And, by the way, the way he fights, very similar. You could not hit this guy with a spike crowbar and take him out. And look at his face. It's like his face is just like formed to like take. It's like he's wearing a fucking shield. I want to see his twenty three and me. See how much, uh, you know, Cro Magnum male he has in him. Yeah, I mean it's incredible the damage this guy can take. Walk you down. Now let me give you the line. He is coming in as a heavy favorite at negative two thirty versus Jordan Wright's plus one eighty. And Jordan Wright did have a very nice finish in his last fight. Very nice, slick striking. But here's the problem. I don't know how much, how many brownie points that's going to score you in this one, buddy. Because this guy's going to take your strikes, and he's going to send it back to you three times from Sunday. And he's going to do it all three rounds. And he's bigger, he's stronger, and I see him just breaking this guy. Like you like to say, the proverbial, take his soul Ooh. by the time he walks out. And even, here's the, real, the reality of the situation. I don't see this going the distance. And even if right just puts on a striking performance the first two rounds. I see him walking out there saying, I didn't, this guy still looks like an absolute woolly mammoth, man child. I've given him everything I got, and this guy keeps coming forward and hitting me. You have to understand, when you're in that situation, that's very difficult to deal with. Yeah, man, I'm with you on Marquez here. Um, you know, our boy uh, Jordan Wright, he is part of um, Joaquin Buckley's highlight reel, which... It's a very impressive highlight reel, to say the least. It is. It is becoming. You know, I, I did like how he bounced back against uh, Pickett here and got the TK or got the KO, TKO, whatever you want to call it. Uh, but man, I have to be with you on Marquez here. Um, I mean, this guy. You know, he beat the shit out of Sam Elvey. Which, I mean, Sam Elvey is a tough guy. He normally goes to the decision, but he beat the shit out of him. And he's got a good gas tank for being that jacked. Like you were saying, he is just a beast of a man. And he can fight all 15 minutes. Uh, I cannot go against Marquez on this one. I know he's a little bit of a favorite, uh, but 
I mean, your favorite's got to win. I, I and, and the thing is, we have talked. We're we're auto fades on Sam Alvey, but one thing I will say about Sam Alvey, he can hang in a fight. Yep. But I don't mean like hang, like hang with you, and it's like a good fight. I just mean like he's very tough to get down. Uh, so that's a good take there. But again, he talked shit about Shab too. Said he wasn't lazy. Uh, if you're not lazy, why are you losing all your fights? You got to look inward, Sam Alvey. You got to look inward. Yeah, inward. I appreciate that. Yeah, sorry. Uh, by the team, way, team shop. If I haven't mentioned it, and can you hit up our contacts at YouTube? If you like and subscribe, because we had over 5,500 views last week, we appreciate all of it. I promise you that two seconds of like and subscribe, it means the world to us. Maybe not so much to you, but just go, just, just hit the mouse and do it. Listen, have you heard us even talk about a Patreon? What kind of fucking podcast do you see that has over 80% win rate and no Patreon, no premium cost bets, all our whale plays, all our best bets, all our underdog bets for free, free, free. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, press the notification, just get us a subscribe. I never want to do a fucking Patreon, by the way. Yeah, like, we're, 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 we don't need, we, we do this for fun. We I, Like one of the, you'll see actually it's now functional. My, my house has a hot tub in it. I'm not doing it for fucking money. So... <laughs> Just take the bets. It's all good. Hit the like and subscribe. All right, we're not gonna we're gonna digress on that. We haven't said it. We only said it one time, so we're gonna move on. That was the one time we're gonna say it. All right, I want to talk about this one. Bruno Silva versus Andrew Sanchez. I think this is a very good fight. So Bruno Silva coming in at negative one thirty seven plus, and Andrew Sanchez coming in at plus one ten. If I'm not mistaken, you have the original line. Did this one cross the bridge or am I? Bridge. Um, it was a pretty close, almost a coin flip to begin with. So it started to cross the yep. bridge. Now, it's going in Bruno Silva's um, favor, and I love Bruno Silva. Now, he was a latecomer to the UFC, um, but if you look at some of his backlog fights, I mean, durable as can be. Again, when you're placing bets, especially in fighting, uh, well, particularly fighting, durability is everything. Stamina is everything. Your ability to go out and fight in that third round is everything. You see it all the time. People punch themselves out. They start to gas. It doesn't matter how good you are in the first two minutes. It matters how good you are in the last two minutes, unless you score a said knockout. Bruno Silva ages like a fine wine in there. And I one of the things that I love that he does is these knees. These knees to the and it doesn't look like much. It's not like a flashy take when you're when you're watching it. But when you are just always like any type of clinch situation and you're landing those knees right to the rib cage or the stuff that gasses somebody. That is a difficult thing to take. That's not the th sometimes it's easier to take that big punch to the face. It almost like gives you adrenaline. You take one right there, my friends. That don't feel good. That don't feel good. It don't feel good as the fight progresses. He's very good at doing that. So strong too, uh, I, I and he is a negative one thirty seven. But I love him in this spot. Um, I think he's durable, so he can. T Andrew Sanchez slick striking though. You got to watch out for the slick striking. But I think Bruno can take that and wins and and kind of break him down as the fight progresses. Um, this is one that I would also for those prop betters out there. I'm not a big prop better, but if I was, I'd probably go with the over. Um, I don't think they could put the over high enough on this one for me not to take it, but uh, Bruno Silva for me all the way. Okay, I'm on the other side of this one as well. Um, you know, both these guys beat up on uh, Turman. Now, Bruno Silva just had his first fight with uh, Turman, and that was all they did, all he has had in the UFC so far. I'm going with the underdog with the experience here. Andrew Sanchez, uh, he hasn't done too much since winning in the tough house, but he did have a fight against Vittori. And um, Muradov, those are two pretty big names in this Huge position. Names. I mean, Vittori's as big as it gets if you're not fighting for a belt right now. Yeah, I mean, he did lose to these guys, but, man, that's experience. I mean, you got uh, high-caliber names that you're fighting against in the Octagon. I did it this week. Uh, Octagon, I just have a hard time seeing Bruno Silva. Uh, he got one win in the UFC, is going for a second fight. I don't see him winning. Um, I'm taking the dog money on this one. It's interesting go for me, I, and, and I've said this before, and I want to reiterate this point. So if you are fighting, there, there is a strength of competition. Like, uh, for example, who are we, Brunson. Mm -hmm. Brunson has a very high caliber strength of competition of which he's won every one of those fights. Mm -hmm. For me, strength of competition holds a lot more weight if, let's say, you fought four big names. And you won two of them and lost two of them, or you won three out of and lost one, or maybe won all four. That's where strength of competition matters to me. If you just simply fought strength of competition but didn't succeed, and there is, to your point, there's an angle of like how good you looked against said competition and et cetera, et cetera. But if you didn't get the W, 
I don't know how much stock I'm putting in strength of competition because you just fought strength of competition, but you you didn't win. Like, you know what I mean? Like if I go and fight, you know, the top fighters in the UFC and I lose all three and then you put me in there, you giving me a, a, a negative line or, you know, on the, on the plus side. Cause I, you know, Hey, listen, he fought a couple of good guys. No, you're not going to do it. I lost. I did exactly what was expected to happen. Right. So that's my, my only thought on that. I do think that it's interesting. I mean, it's going to be a good fight again. You know, as we've been talking this out, I kind of was dogging the card, but now I'm I'm kind of like, I, I am actually excited for this card. I think there's been some good fights put together here. They're just not the biggest names. So I got that part in my heart where I love all these cards. I can't, I can't get behind hating on them because I mean, you see, you find someone new, you see a fight that uh matchup was so good that you would have never thought the matchup was good, man. I, I, these Saturday night fights when they're not having them, you know, if they skip a week, it's breaking my heart. So I'm never going to dog these cards. I know they're not big names sometimes, but I still love them. All right. So, you know, as we move down this card, we are um, doing more fights than we normally do. We usually just pick what we what we think is the best. But man, the more I look at this, the more I just feel like there's some hot takes here. We actually just did a little bit of a, a little halftime, looked up some tape on this last one, just kind of like literally mid show, mid taping. My God. All right. So let's talk about this. Jim Miller coming in at negative 220 for the time of taping versus Eric Gonzalez. Now, we were just watching the tape on Eric Gonzalez. Definitely some holes in the guy's game. Hunter, I'll give him that. But the guy has an iron chin again. We're discussing that durability piece. The line is the mover here for me. How in the hell, Jim Miller, he's lost his last three UFC fights, gets justifying a negative 225 line versus, you know, a guy that's up and comer getting his shot, getting to be under the big lights. Um, and he's, he's won four out of his last five. Um, he's he, it, we were just saying he fights like a Mexican boxer. Yeah, I mean yeah. It, he can take things in stride. He'll take two to give three. Exactly comes forward. The question you got to ask yourself is: Jim Miller going to be the one to dish out the punishment? Are you going to put this on your? T I mean, are they serving up a cupcake? Do you think? I mean, what? I don't know. I, I wish you could bet on fight of the night because this might be it. But my man Eric uh, Gonzalez coming in as his UFC debut. I mean, they're giving him uh, Jim Miller for a reason coming in as your UFC debut. Uh, you know, gatekeeper. He he's one past gatekeeper. He's a, a newcomer, welcomer at this point. Uh, Jim Miller is. I mean, he had hip surgery. He hasn't won a fight since he tore his. Uh, I think his labrum in his hip. Um, he hasn't won a fight since. And this guy. Um, it's a hot take. Gonzalez yeah. is just coming in wanting, hungry. I mean, you could tell this guy wants to win every single fight he's in. It doesn't matter if he gets hit with a fucking crowbar in the side of his head, man. This guy ain't going to quit the whole time. You got 15 minutes of fury with these two. Uh, if Jim Miller looks anything like he had in the past, you know, vintage Jim Miller, it's going to be a barn burner. And, um, you know, give me give me the plus money with the young dog coming in. The hungry dog runs faster on this one. You know, a lot of times people say that for football bets, but... Uh, uh, Gonzalez is a hungry, hungry, hungry hippo, and he's going to come in there and try to kill Jim Miller. I, I got uh, the dog on this one. Fight of the night, potential. And and I'm with you. Yeah, give me give me the the plus money and and uh, Eric Gonzalez here and Jim Miller. Vintage Jim Miller is very loosely defined. He is 17 and 14 with one no contest. Loser of three of his last five. Um, and here's another nice, interesting stat for you. You think like, okay, he's just going to come in and own this guy and get, you know, get a knockout cash paycheck, right? He is won by knockout or TKO six and a half percent of the time. And there is a lot to go off of there. I mean, there's over 31, 32 fights, 30, you know what I mean? To, to 32 fights that you can go off of that percentage. That's not like he just fought, you know, once or twice. No. Yeah. So yeah. does Jim Miller have the ability, the power to take this guy out? No. Um, you know, I do think that there might be a couple of holes in the wrestling game. But one of the things that I like to see when I was watching this footage, the guy's always moving. Mm. And that is huge. If the fight's going to go three rounds, give me the guy that's moving constantly. More often than not, you're going to come out ahead. I think, again, the line is the is the is the the big decision maker for me on this one. But you got the youth. You got the height. You got the reach. What else do you need, man? Exactly. So you got you have all of that. The hunger. Your debut, 
you know, maybe maybe the first round he might not do so hot, but I think he's going to come into his own. And he's first, eased into it on the apex, too. It's not like he's with the bright lights. He's not with the crowd. He's not with the full UFC effect of a main event with Conor McGregor headlining the show. Just a guy making a name for himself. Hey, I haven't mentioned this yet. Um, please, like and subscribe. If you've watched us this far, what the hell are you doing? Just hit the fucking button. Oh, yeah. It takes two seconds. We gave you about five winners at least this far. Ooh, all right. Um, now, this is where the card, I think, gets downplayed a bit because we have the co-main in the main event of which we are going to discuss. Um, and uh, let's just be honest. It's not uh, like I always like to say you can put shit in a champagne glass. It's still shit. <laughs> these t Some of these would probably be early prelims at best on most cards, but here we are. Um, now, this next one is a big – it's a pick -em at this point. Um, Andre – Orlowski versus Carlo, Carlos Felipe. Uh, negative 112 both sides, paying the juice to Vegas. Uh, they're probably seeing exactly what I'm seeing. It is important to note. Orlowski, I'll be not the most impressive. He has won four out of his last five UFC main card fights. Um, so, you know, he's been slightly active as of recently. And um, albeit, he's, it seems like every time I watch his fights, I, I want to uh, vomit. Um, <laughs> but uh, he fights in slow motion, but he does enough to get the victory, I guess. Um, Carlos Felipe, you know, he's also been, you know, he's not looked bad. He's won four out of his last five. Uh, but again, not a barn burner by any means. I'm going to be honest, for me, I'm, I'm not going to bet this one. It's a pick em. I'm paying the juice. And. You know, quite frankly, I don't know who would win. And to be honest, I don't give a shit who would win. You know, it's an afternoon card this weekend again. And I don't know if I'm going to be drunk enough to bet this card. You know what? If I am, though, I would be taking Arlowski. But that I'm not going to give the pick to the people and tell you guys about him. Um, I'm going to have a little bit of fun with him. I just always have a sweet spot in my heart for Andrew Arlowski. He's fun, fun, fun to watch. I mean, he, he gives me a lot of good memories back when I was a kid watching him with those fangs in his mouth, winning championships. Um, I, you know, I think he's still got it for some time. I mean, he'll, he'll surprise you once in a while. But like I said, I might, I might get a little bit boozed up and bet on this guy, but I wouldn't give it to the people. Yeah, I, I, and, and I agree with And the one thing I will say about Andre Arlowski, and we sometimes comment or joke or in a jovial way, we'll say, like, they're on Bellator Row. Like, the, the man is out there. He's on a mission. Like, he's he, he believes he can do it. He's not in there just cashing checks. The guy, I think, does fight with He passion. still had his heart in it. Yeah, he yeah. does. He really I does. do get that vibe from him. But I do think that old father time does catch up to everybody, and it is starting to catch up to him. And this is uh, – what is the age discrepancy here? I'm... 42 to 26. Yeah. That's a lot there. That's just a lot. Um, I, I don't have a play. No, I, don't yeah. a play. I can't offer you a play on this one. I know it's co-main. I really love – I hate not giving a play on co-mains, but there's no way I'm offering you anything. Not doing it. Yeah, we already made you enough money coming to the co-main. Just take that one off. Watch a little bit of football. Exactly. So I'm going to, for the final leg of the relay, I will pass the baton to Dave, but I will give you the line before we do it. We have Aspen Lad, Norma Dumont. I do think that we are on opposite ends here. Time of taping, we have Aspen Lad coming in at negative 139. Interesting number, not one you hear every day. Versus Norma Dumont at plus 115. Norma is the plus side. Where are you at on this one, buddy? Okay, now I remember why we said we didn't like this card. Uh, Co-main, main event. Let's see. So it was going to be a little bit of a hotness with um, Holly Holm coming in and fighting uh, DeMont. And, uh, you know, he got a little star recognition. Holly Holm did beat Ronda Rousey. Everybody knows her from that. And, uh, you know, you can watch her, you know, kind of sail into the sunset, beating all these uh, girls that really don't have a name. Um, but I think uh, DeMont got... Her, should thank her lucky stars that Holly Holm backed out of this one because she gets an Aspen Land who just had missed weight. Um, I know this might not be breaking news, but if you haven't been paying attention, Aspen Lad was set to fight and she had missed weight. Um, we were betting against her when she was set to fight. Now she's going to be moving up a weight class, still in Vegas, fighting a girl who was training to fight the Holly Holm. Now you're going to you tell me that you get a Brazilian woman. Training to fight Holly Holm, getting underdog money 
on an Aspen lad who just missed weight and is moving up a weight class, that's going to be a huge bet on my end. I am taking Dumont, and I'm taking that plus money all the way to the bank. I'm going to be putting everything I want on this card on this girl. Um, Aspen lad, something's not right with her camp. Something's not right with her weight cut. Uh, she wanted a payday still, and she's going to get it right here, but the odds makers are out of their mind we have been beating vegas and nothing is going to be a better beat on vegas than this fight right here i got doom on all the way um i think we might be on the same side on this one cheers buddy he said just as good as i could have uh the one thing I'll, oh i almost didn't drink no i have <clears throat> so <clears throat> one thing that uh you didn't mention mm -hmm. that i think plays into her favor what is aspen lad good at takedowns Takes you down grappling. She's good at that kind of shit. Have you seen the legs on Dumont? Who? These are two fucking tree trunks. Now, for those of you who aren't familiar with grappling, that's tough to do. You ever see someone kind of spread their legs out, put their back on the cage or a sprawl, and you're having to grab that leg and bring it in, kind of lift it up? You, the goal is you want to kind of get it up, get their body kind of going in a backwards motion. You know how difficult that is to do with the amount of leg muscles? On the person that she's fighting, if she can't take her down, which I am banking heavily that she can't take everything he just said, oh, that is incredible. I'm giving you the all I can offer you after that. I love that. I'm going to give you the fight optics here. All of that considering, the striking is Dumont all day, all day. So if Aspen Lad on a bad weight cut, probably having trouble with the camp, all those things that you just heard. Can't get the takedown. It's going to be a tough night in the office. And <laughs> we're back-to-back -back underdogs. I just realized this on women's fights for a finale. Yeah. Um, so we she can't get the week. takedown. She's going to have to strike. And quite frankly, I would imagine if I was enormous, if, and if I can do it, a dumbass like me over here wearing a gorilla shirt, if you haven't seen it, um, and he's wearing a banana shirt, can identify the path to victory. You know what I think can identify the path to victory for coaches, for camp, probably training for it. We got to keep this on the feet. we got two tree trunks there. We're going to keep those lumbered in with the roots, keep them right into the ground. I think this is a great, great underdog card. Now, I don't know that they're all going to hit. I really don't, but I do think that some of them will hit. And I'm going to tell you right now, um, I think this is a good betting card. I really do. We'll see. I didn't, you know, I guess I didn't say that last week. That should have been a hot take last week. Like, oh, this is a good one. And then we, we hit them all. But either way, um, whether you like the card or not, the next card, the next card, I'll explain it this way. That's when the babysitter comes and the grownups and the adults get to go out to the bar. <laughs> um, in fact, we probably will even bring that one to you from the actual Aquagon. You probably have wondered if you came to us as of late, why is this thing called the Aquagon? Well, we're going to give that to you next week. With that being said, I think that's all we have to offer here on this one. Yeah, don't forget. I mean, like this video. If you stayed this long, or I'm guessing you're coming back to sec check and see how good our picks did, uh, make sure you check it out. I've been hitting everything on Dana White Contender Series. That's uh, Cup Size MMA Monday nights. Every Monday night, I'm breaking down everything on there. Uh, we, this is Aquagon. We got Bad Bitch Bets Friday night after the weigh-ins. We're putting DraftKings lineups together. Make sure you're putting the notifications on, liking these videos, so you get more, more, more winners on your way. Like and subscribe. Salute, my friends. Stay positive. Test negative. Thank you.